this is a button and I'm wondering can we make it fun to press the button? Cause let's be honest, pressing buttons is kind of a lame activity. As an experiment, unplug your controller and see for how long it stays interesting to press those stupid little buttons. Spoiler, not very long. The first reason why that is the case is impact. We humans like having an impact on our environment because it gives us a feeling of control and power. Destroying things is only so much fun because it gives you a lot of impact quickly and without a lot of effort, which makes you feel important and powerful. Not having any impact on your environment usually feels like a waste of time. So let's start by giving our button some impact. Whenever you press it, the circle next to it lights up. We have some impact now. Wow, but why is it still not fun? Wow. <laughs> Probably not enough impact yet. So I decided to make the circle rotate around the button and whenever you press the button, it stops. You already get a feeling of control now because you get to decide when the circle moves and when it doesn't. And that impact is already big enough to create a little bit of fun. There's still a big difference though. Destroying an object in real life has a lot more lasting consequences. There's no bringing that whatever that was back to normal, which makes its destruction feel more meaningful than a temporary circle motion on a screen. Writing something with a pencil on a piece of paper doesn't feel nearly as meaningful as writing with a permanent marker on a shelf, right? Lasting consequences are more fun. So let's give our button some lasting consequences. Holding the button creates a bubble and releasing it shoots it away. And I have to say, it worked. It's a lot more fun now. It almost feels like drawing an image. I even decided to give the button some knockback when firing, which made it even better. Anything that adds additional impact to your actions is usually a good thing. By the way, do you know what people really like to have an impact on? other people. When you make a move in chess, your impact is not just that the piece is standing in a different position now. The far bigger impact you have is being able to trigger thoughts, emotions and reactions from your opponent. Another kind of impact is reward. If somebody told me that I'd get a piece of chocolate every time I press a button, I'd probably press that button quite a lot, cause I like chocolate and it releases dopamine in my dummy little brain. While we cannot do that, there are a lot of other things we can use as chocolate in video games. The two most obvious ones are acoustic rewards and eye candy. Hell, there are entire YouTube channels centered around the creation of satisfying sounds, because sounds can really be quite addicting. In my case, I just used a free program called BFXR to create some sound effects real quick. They're not even all that good, but the difference it makes is still absolutely remarkable. Let's also add some eye candy in the form of particles, some wobble and various shaking effects. Haptic rewards like controller rumble work as well. So far we're still just adding additional impact to our button. That is because reward and impact are very closely related. A good reward has to have some sort of impact and impact almost always feels quite rewarding. The same rules apply, lasting rewards tend to feel more valuable. A classic example for that in games would be an XP bar. Every time you fire a projectile you get XP, when the bar is full you level up and the higher your level the the more projectiles you shoot at once. The additional projectiles then lead to you having even more impact and eye candy to look at. So this is definitely both a desirable as well as a lasting reward. What's interesting about rewards is that artificially delaying them a bit can often make them even more desirable. One of the reasons why loot boxes often have quite prolonged opening animations. And there's yet another way to make rewards feel even more rewarding. Randomness. So let's try that. Let's randomize the XP values and ta-da. <laughs> We have turned our button into an abusive gambling game, yay! Morally questionable, but I'm not gonna lie, it is more exciting and keeps you pressing those buttons for a while. So that's our first segment, impact and reward are more than enough to make something fun. Look at this, that button must be fun to press, right? Next up, balancing over a slack line, playing the piano, drawing, playing chess. All of these activities require entirely different body motions, but they're fun for the same reason challenge. Yep, even something as simple as a button press can provide you with enough challenge to keep you entertained for thousands of hours. I can't be the only one who's amazed by that, am I? The problem with challenge is that too much of it feels stressful and frustrating, too little of it feels boring. If you want people to have fun with your challenge, you have to keep them between the two, which is hard to pull off, mainly because people are just so different from one another. I added some enemies that can only be defeated by projectiles that are big enough, projectiles that are too small compared to the enemies are absorbed completely without dealing any damage. This makes for a surprisingly compelling challenge that is all about timing, positioning and even a little bit of planning. I also attached the XP reward to destroying enemies because attaching rewards to challenges is a sensible thing to do I guess. A good challenge should also feel fair and provide you with plenty of feedback on how well you're doing. Our game already somewhat fulfills those two requirements so let's just leave it at that. The game feels pretty fun by now and I can't stop pressing the button. Help me. That is the power of challenge. Very very powerful tool for creating fun. There's just one more missing piece in the puzzle. 
fantasy. We humans have the amazing ability to emphasize with almost everybody and everything. We love to wonder what it must be like to explore space in our spaceship, to go on a journey, meet new friends. We love stories, we love feelings, and we find it very fun and refreshing to escape reality from time to time. The question is, can we even make that happen with our button? Well, let us try! Ta-da! You're in a spaceship now. The owners of the spaceship like having fun, okay? That's why they wrote fun on the spaceship. And just like that, you're not pressing a random button anymore. You're pressing the master button in the fun spaceship. And what's surprising is that it really does make a difference. Even though the gameplay is completely the same, you are in space now. You could also be one of the greatest fighters in the world. You can be whatever you want to be. We just have to acknowledge that people do want different things and that counts for all three of these categories. Different people want different challenges, different rewards, different fantasies. So if somebody doesn't like space, you might even be better off keeping it abstract. You know what I'm saying? There are no one-size-fits-all solutions. The truth is nobody knows what fun even is. I mean, it's some sort of complicated thing happening in your brain with millions of neurons involved, but the details of how a finger motion like this can turn into something as powerful as fun will probably remain a secret for a while longer. The best we can do till then is creating oversimplified models like this, which might not be the full truth, but close enough that we can do something useful with it. Needless to say, I'm not the first one trying to explain the phenomenon of fun. I took a lot of inspiration from other people's work here. These three points are just the ones that came up again and again and again, so I combined them into one model. I feel like it's definitely a solid framework. At least it explains the fun in all of my favorite fun activities, but I'm curious to hear what you think. Now let me show you another amazing button that is really fun to press. I promise. The wishlist button of Will You Snail, the indie game I've been working on for two years now. Did you even try to dodge that cause? I didn't see anything. It's a fast-paced platform about fighting an interactive AI called Squid, who tries to predict your movement and spawns traps in real time. I can simulate entire universes. Millions of them, in fact. The link is in the description and it's a very fun button to press. It has a lot of impact because it puts the game directly into your wishlist, which makes sure you don't miss the launch and I get a little bit of extra visibility, so it's a great way to support the channel. Last but not least, here are some video recommendations for you. If you enjoy game design videos like this, I can only recommend you check these out. They're covering very interesting questions like what makes for an interesting decision in a game, how can you craft interesting decisions, and much more, looking at the topic fun from a couple of different angles. Really hope you enjoyed this video, hope you got something out of it uh, and see you in the next one.